Welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and our lesson is going to be on identifying ionic versus molecular compounds. Now, as we'll see in our future lessons on naming compounds, it's vitally important that we can tell the difference because the way that an ionic compound is named is completely different from the way a molecular compound is named. So just real quickly here, I'll just show you how to tell the difference. Now, ionic compounds are just what they sound like. They are compounds composed of ions. So they're going to have one or more cations paired up with one or more anions. Now, as you might recall, cations are ions that have a positive charge, while anions are ions that have a negative charge. Now, typically, but not always, but 99.9% .9 of the time, ionic compounds are easy to identify because the cation that's present is going to be a metal. Now here below I put a copy of the periodic table for us and there's a little staircase that kind of goes along here but it's kind of hard to see so I'll kind of fill it in for us. Now on the left side of the staircase this is where the metals live. So over here these are going to be metals. And on the right side of the staircase these are what are called the nonmetals. And right along the staircase, right along here, these are called the semi-metals or the metalloids. So if you see one of these elements on the left side, you can be sure that it's going to be an ionic compound. So any of these elements live right along here, anywhere along here. If one of these elements is present in the compound, it's going to be an ionic compound. Now notice though, just real quickly, hydrogen is technically on the left side. But hydrogen is a nonmetal. We could have written it right over here in the nonmetal part because I think you would agree that hydrogen is a gas and it has properties that are more similar to a nonmetal than it does metals, which tend to be solids, shiny, good conductors, etc. So, for example, let's say we had sodium and chlorine together in a compound. Well, sodium lives right here, it's a metal, so that must be an ionic compound. Let's say we had iron combined with bromine in a compound. Okay, so if we find iron, it lives right here. So that's a metal. So that would be an ionic compound. Uh, let's say we had um, silver combined with sulfur. Where's silver live? Oh, it's right here. Of course, that's a metal. So if it's got a metal, it's going to be an ionic compound. Now, molecular compounds are what are called covalent compounds. They are formed of just nonmetals. So again, the nonmetals live up here in this top right kind of quadrant, plus hydrogen. So if all of the elements that are present in that compound come from this area of the periodic table, the nonmetals, then you can be sure it's a molecular compound. For example, water is probably one we all know. Water is two nonmetals. Hydrogen and oxygen are both nonmetals. So that would be. Uh, covalent compound or molecular compound. How about carbon dioxide? Well, carbon and oxygen. Here's carbon, here's oxygen. So those are both nonmetals. How about a compound that's called phosphorus hexafluoride? Well, phosphorus and fluorine, they both live on the nonmetal sides. So these would all be molecular or covalent compounds. Okay, so just real quickly here, we'll go through some examples and see if we can pick out if these are ionic or molecular compounds. So potassium and chlorine. So let's find both the elements. Well, here's potassium, here's chlorine. So it's got a metal and a nonmetal. So because it has a metal, we can be sure it must be an ionic compound. How about nitrogen and two oxygens, or what's called nitrogen dioxide? Well, nitrogen, okay, that lives right here. Oxygen, that lives right here. So these are both nonmetals. So this compound must be molecular. How about hydrogen and sulfur? Well, here's hydrogen. Here's sulfur. Again, hydrogen is on the left side, but remember, technically, we could have written it over here with the other nonmetals. So they're both nonmetals, so this would be a molecular compound. How about iron, sulfur, and oxygen together in a compound? Well, here's iron. Here's sulfur, and here's oxygen. So iron is a metal, so therefore it must be an ionic compound. Okay, well how would you figure out this one? Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So we look and we find here's carbon, 
here's hydrogen and here's oxygen. So what do you think? Is it ionic or molecular? Well, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are all nonmetals, so it must be molecular. And one last one, lead, chlorine, and oxygen together. So here's lead, here's chlorine, and here's oxygen. Remember, our staircase runs right along here. So lead is on the left side. So lead is a metal, which means it must be an ionic compound. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick lesson. Be sure and click down below on the subscribe button so you can be notified as soon as new videos are posted. And we'll see you next time at GetChemistryHelp.com. Thank you.